Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Presona Studio One is one of my go-to pieces of software for creating music, and so I'm always super excited when a new version comes out. Presonus recently released version 5.5 of Studio One, and it's loaded with exciting new features. Let's check them out. We've got something like 30 new features in version 5.5. It really is a major update, and a lot of these features are based on user requests, so they're the things that we've all been asking for as we work with the software. There's some really fun stuff here, as well as some things that'll really enhance your workflow. We've got mastering improvements, we've got show page improvements, we've got editing improvements, workflow improvements, and lots more. To begin, let's look at the project page, which is where we master our projects. One of the big additions here in version 5.5 is track automation. So let's take a track here that I've got loaded up. We'll zoom in a bit, scroll back over, and now we can turn on track automation. We can choose what automation we want to display. For example, we now have volume automation. So we can automate here just like we do on the song page when we're creating music. This is very useful when you're mastering because you can actually work with the volume levels without using a dynamics processor. But we can do more than just automate the volume. We can also automate other parameters as well. So for example, if we insert a compressor onto our song, we can tell it to read automation, close that down, and now we can add parameters for that compressor. Let's choose, oh, let's say, uh, let's choose attack. We'll add that over here. Close this up, and now we can automate our attack time just like any other parameter right here on the project page. So this addition to automation makes it very easy to get in and fine tune your songs when you're mastering. But if we wanna go even further, we can now work with clip gain envelopes for fine tuning our songs on the project page as well. So let's hide our automation here. We'll click, open up the menu, select gain envelope. You can see our line shows up here. And now we can really get in and tweak things with the gain envelope. If we zoom in close, we can really dial in all of this very carefully. Now this is pre-insert, so you can do all of this before you ever run through a compressor, and this makes it very easy to get your dynamics exactly perfectly the way that you want them on the project page. Another addition to the project page that was already on the song page is the addition of the listen bus. Now this is basically a second set of outputs. You can assign this to a second set of outputs on your interface, for example. And what you might do with this is set it up so that the listen bus is feeding your monitors. You can put a different set of processors on that listen bus than you have on the master bus. The master bus is the one that will create your files. The listen bus is the one you're hearing. This is really useful in particular if you're using room tuning software with your monitors. But there are even more additions to the project page. We can now transform the audio on the project page into either rendered audio or real-time audio. So if we select our song, come up here to project, we can now transform to rendered audio. A Couple of selections there. And basically it's gonna convert this to a new audio file that has all the processing included. So any inserts you have there, compressors, limiters, EQs, other effects, will be rendered right into that file. Now the really cool thing is that this is non-destructive, so we can undo this as well. We can pop right back to the original file and all the inserts will come back. But once you render it, all those inserts and things will be taken out of there so you really reduce the load on your computer when you're mastering. So we finished rendering the file and now I can undo that. We can also redo, put it back where it was. It's a very useful function when you're mastering. There are other workflow enhancements in the project page as well. For example, if you wanna rename a file, we can double click and change that, and now we can hit tab to move to the next file and move through and rename them all very quickly. That's very useful if you're changing the track numbering, for example, on a bunch of different songs on this page. Two other really cool additions in version 5.5 of Studio One for the project page. When we're ready to export our final project, we can go down here to digital release. Now we have the option to export in multiple file formats simultaneously. So we can choose to export as WAV, as FLAC, as MP3, and as an Opus file, which by the way is a new file format for Studio One. When you select multiple file formats like this, Studio One will export them all automatically for you so you don't have to make multiple passes through. The last new feature on the project page in Studio One 5.5 I wanna show you is the ability to target loudness for your files. And this is very important when you're submitting files to a streaming service because each streaming service has a slightly different uh, loudness that they wanna see. And if you don't meet that loudness, they may actually adjust the levels for you. Not something we usually want. Usually we wanna control our own settings when we submit things for these services. So with Studio One 5.5, we can simply click adjust loudness and we have target curves here or presets for many of the different services. So if we wanna release on Apple Music, for example, 
it'll go at a max loudness of minus 16 luffs. If we go down here to uh, Netflix, for example, minus 27. And if we go to Amazon Music, minus 14. So Studio One 5.5 will automatically help you hit those target loudness levels. If you're using Studio One 5.5 for live performance, then an addition to the show page is gonna be very important to you. We've always had this perform view where you could look at the transport controls, for example, controls for different parameters and so on. It was an easy way to have a central location for accessing the controls for playback. Now, we can actually pop that off and have it be a separate independent window. You can move that window wherever you like on your screen. If you're using multiple monitors, you could pull that window off onto a second monitor and have easy access to it. It's a very cool usability feature. There are a lot of new workflow and editing features that have been added to Studio One 5.5. Everything from the ability to use Impact XT and Sample One XT with the Atom controllers, for example, in a much more efficient fashion, to manual time stretching, to faster preset switching in the Empire Guitar Amp plugin, and, and many, many more. But I want to show you some really cool features. One is that we can now save automation as part of mix scenes. So if we open our mixer up, we can come down here, and these are our mix scenes. Now, Scenes allow us to store basically the entire setup for our whole mixer. So we could save this basic setup as scene one, for example. We could make a few changes, change our levels, maybe even insert uh, a different plug-in here. And uh, we could save that as a new scene. We'll call that scene two. And now we can instantly, by double-clicking, move from one scene to the other scene. But in the past, you couldn't save automation as part of this. Now, with version 5.5 of Studio One, you can also save automation. This makes it very easy to try different automation curves on tracks or different special effects using automation and quickly switch between them to compare. You could also compare an early version of a mix with a later version of a mix with all the automation intact. This is really powerful when you're creating mixes inside Studio One. I use Studio One for just about all my composing, so there are a couple new features that I'm really excited about. Previously, we had the chord track, which would follow along with the chords of the song. It would even analyze the, uh, the audio and the MIDI that you had and create a chord track. But now, we can drag a MIDI file onto that chord track and Studio One will automatically place those chords for us. That's very cool. So you can work with different progressions and different parts you have in MIDI files, pull them in, and instantly create music using those. And of course, you can conform your tracks to that chord track as well. We can also select and drag MIDI information out of the chord track onto an instrument track. If we open this up, we can see that all that MIDI data is right there. Let's zoom in a little closer. And this lets us check out another new feature, and that's the ability to create strum patterns. To create a strum pattern, simply select the chord. You can see everything's lined up. All these notes will play simultaneously. Select the bottom or the top note, hold down Option or Alt and Command and pull, and Studio One will create a strum for us. We can do that from the top note as well. It's a very cool feature for just adding a little bit of life to those chords rather than everything being a block chord. Studio One 5.5 also allows us to draw stacks of notes based on the scale that we have selected for a track. So let's add a new note in here. We'll select it, and if we've got scale ticked here, and we've got a scale or a major or minor triad selected here, we can hold the option of the Alt key, drag up, and Studio One will automatically conform that to the scale or the chord that you're creating. It's a very quick way to audition and try different chord patterns. The chord selector has also been enhanced. So if we click on a chord in the chord track, we can see the different options for chords here. And now in Studio One 5.5, we now have the ninth or the second that we can add in. And we also have flat five and sharp five that can be added into chords. So needless to say, we've got a ton of new features inside of Studio One 5.5. Like I said, there's something like 30 new features and we've just touched on a few of those and we've really only scratched the surface of what those features can do. These are deep additions to Studio One 5.5 that'll add a lot of power for your music making. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of my favorite new features in Studio One 5.5. For more information, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.